So guys, right now we're heading over to Dre's Flavors. Now, Andre Bernard is a famous chef on the island. He used to work with St. George's University. After 18 years, he retired and opened up his own restaurant. So that's what you're gonna be checking out afterwards. Dre's Flavor, Andrew Bernard, I can't wait. This is like the type of stories we like, right? Small restaurant, very intimate setting, good food. You ready, Nate? Yeah, I'm ready, let's go. Coffee break? Got some goat, goat, curry goat, I mean, curry goat. <laughs> After about a five minute drive over here, whew, it's hot now. Grenada getting sticky icky. Whew, it's hot. What's going on, my man? David, this is Dr. Dre. How you doing, Dre? Pretty good. Chef, pleasure. Awesome, man. Pleasure. Nice to meet you. So what are we doing today? Uh, fall food sauce. And I'm going to be doing one of my signature dish that everybody loves, which is a curry goat. You mean goat curry? Goat curry. That's right. <laughs> Passion fruit, citrus, caramel. I'll take Calambrola. Five fingers or star fruit. That's the one thing I love about Grenada. You get fresh local juices everywhere. And here I'm having star fruit. Wow, that was good. Man, that was so refreshing. We're gonna be doing some pick, um, fall food sauce. This, so this is the ingredients for my signature dish, which is our curry goat. Ingredients here for the sauce. So let me get the um the fall foot out. When the the feet are pedicure, remove this. Then the nails. And then the nails. Pressure cook for about 15 minutes until it's tender. So chicken feet, he cut off the nails, cut a little bit more off of it, then puts it into the pressure cooker. 15 minutes later, it is ready. So our signature dish here is curry goat. Well, my good friend David a good curry. <laughs> you guys tell us what is right. <laughs> so we're gonna start off with our oil, and then we're gonna get aromatics working, which is Ginger, minced ginger, garlic, our chopped onions, cardamom seeds, clove, cinnamon, cinnamon, cinnamon stick, local, Grenada is renowned for that, our bay leaf, some of our crushed red peppers. Process. So we add in a bit of nutmeg, turmeric, crushed red peppers, red masala, and cumin mix, curry. This is what makes curry goat so special: is this rich masala in the very bottom. It thickens up with some onions. The bay leaves with cinnamon sticks, right? Cardamom. Cardamom. Smells amazing. Wow. Yeah, I'm gonna add some sliced tomato. Oh gosh, that's gonna be too good. So you add tomato and add water, right? Yes. Nah, I'm not high. I'm not high. I'm not high. Just humidity. Then add the secret ingredient, coconut milk. I mean, that coconut milk just made it nice and rich and creamy. You can see it, it's super white and clear. It looks like an Indian gravy now. Yes, it does. That rum, bro? It's insane. It's all that good stuff in there. Just add a little bit of liquid. Wow. So I'm putting this over here to keep some of the all the heat and moisture basically in, lock it in. How long does it take? A few hours. Slow and long. 
Luckily for us, he already made a batch this morning. Here's one of my favorite things about being in the Caribbean is you have that influence from India, you know, that South Asian influence, the curries, but obviously every island does it different. And, you know, Grenada, Trinidad, obviously they're like cousin islands, but very different cultures, but heavily influenced by Trinidad cuisine, of course. But here they have the spices, right? So because of this, they have all the spices, they make things elevated. So we're gonna be blending a few bits of seasoning together. We got some shadow in here, which is almost the same flavor as cilantro. All right, then we have some, some big, big leaf um, Italian parsley, which we call um, celery. And we got our own seasoning peppers. This is the sweet, the sweet version, not the hot one. Yeah. I'm just gonna remove some of that seeds. I'll leave the seeds, man. Yeah. <laughs> if you remove the seeds, there's no heat. Just gonna give it a rough, a rough blend. Rough, rough right. Fresh red peppers. Get some heat. And also some freshly squeezed lemon juice. So the reason for the lemon juice because sauce is basically pickle, pickle meat or pickle. So we're using the, the lemon juice together with the, uh, the other seasoning to basically create a marinade that gonna you know, infuse the flavor of the whatever. So this is good right there. Walking with some cucumbers. Just gonna just take some skin out just for garnishing sake to get a nice spiral. Then we're gonna just put some nice thin slices. Put in here. So we're starting the seasoning process, so I'm gonna start working with some salt in some room temperature water, which is gonna help the salt dissolve. Pasta with our lips, crushed seasoning. We're gonna taste to make sure our flavor is right. Excellent. So we're gonna add those aromatics here. Done? Yep. Finish. Our chicken feet sauce is over. So pickled chicken feet. Can't wait to try it. Drench them. I personally don't love chicken feet. I like pigtail more. But. Mm -hmm. We got to get in here. It's a point about our skin. Very gelatinous. Good. Very tasty. Love the seasoning. That's shadow bending. Get through. Suck everything out. Tasty. Let's try this curry goat. It's ultra hot right now, like piping. Oh wow. I could taste the meat. Mm. Yeah. That's the reason why I don't season the goat before. Because I don't want all that juice to, to come, come out. out to yeah. Marinate. So make all the juice come out into the cooking process. So the juice is in the, juice, the gravy, that's right? Yeah. Amazing, I can't wait to try this. So this yeah. with some rice and peas, rice right? And peas, yes. It's gonna be good. <laughs> so we got some green pigeon peas and rice. Bursting with flavor here. Uh, the curry goat. Where do we sit? Curry goat. I love you, bro. It's so delicious. I love the mix of this the peas with the rice and the curry. It absorbs that gravy. All the 
go. So tender. It is really amazing, guys. Look at this. Pull it out. Hit the bone. Of course, always bone with goat. Still super hot. What I like to do is I like to mix my beautiful gravy and curry with the rice. Get some of the meat. Mmm. It's really so enjoyable. Wow. This is the third low curry of the trip. The curry goat. Phenomenal dish. Oh yeah. I love all the spices in here. Look at this right here. Beautiful piece of meat. Pick this up. Oil down is a national dish, but curry goat is the second national dish for me. That's the thing you have to try wherever you are in Grenada. I'd say this is my, my favorite so far of the curry goats. Yeah, man. It's a little sweet too. And the cinnamon, the cumin. How long do you let it cook for? Because it's really, really soft. It's super tender. Uh, let it cook for at least slow long for about two hours. The, the secret ingredient is just using fresh spices fresh from the land. Spices. Don't want to overdo it with the rice, but I'm in heaven right now. Heaven. I mean, the pig feet are good. This is better. That curry goat was so good, but I have to cleanse my palate with this passion fruit. Wow. That was fantastic. Congratulations, my man. Thanks, man. That was so good. Excellent. Curry Thanks, goat, phenomenal. Excellent. So he opened his own restaurant. You guys have to come here. It's here in St. Andrews from Grenville yes, yeah. area. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's right. My man. Delicious food. Thank thanks, you so much. Appreciate it. Full of flavor. Excellent. The Spice Island. Can't get any better. Thanks, thanks David. No, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you. I appreciate you being here, man. No, no, for sure, man. Oh, I'm going to dream about this one. <laughs> that was good. It was good. Well, that was delicious. And now I need a nap. Oh, it's dry. Okay. Right now. So guys, right now we're at Lake Antoine. Lake Antoine is one of the three lakes that Grenada has. Well, it's actually two plus a pond, liver upon. The other lake we have is Granite and Crater Lake. Yeah? Now, it is said that they're all connected because they're all formed because of volcanic activity. So they're all craters of volcanoes. And looking at this here, it said that it dates back to, to 15,000 years during the final stage of volcanic activity in Grenada. We just arrived to River Antoine Distillery. This is the oldest rum distillery on the island of Grenada. And today we're gonna to see how they make rum. And how do they do that? Well, they use sugar cane. Let's go inside and let's explore. Careful here. Okay, so we're seeing something very special that no one gets to see when they bottle the rum. So this is the bottling aspect. Hey guys, how you doing? You good? Wow, it smells great. It smells like some strong, strong stuff, huh? What is that, 70%? 75%. Woo! 75%, you can't even take it off the island. You cannot take this bottle out of Grenada. All right, let's go, let's go. All right. So we have to like rush because they're gonna crush the sugar cane right now, and that's gonna happen in one minute. Let's go. I'm sorry, what's your name? Lions, everybody call me Lions here. Lions head? Uh-huh, Lions. So right here we have the mill, right? Watermill, incredible. I've never seen that, so this is the only distillery that has that? Only distillery that functions using this water mill. All right, let's go, let's go, follow me. So the crushing of the canes are done on the opposite side of the belt. All of this belt is driven by the water wheel. So if the wheel is not turning, nothing here is able to work. So that's how much we are dependent on this water wheel and the source of water from the river. So I want to show you where the crushing is done back here. This is insane, look, it's the biggest Sugarcane press that I've ever seen in my life. I mean, in India, the guys do it themselves. Here, they need a water mill. So they need that entire thing, the pressure that it adds to the machine. Crushing the canes here for extracting the juice of it. So the canes come from the belt, get pressed. Those that are not well pressed get to go through the process of pressing again, so it's double press. While the juice, on the other hand, passes through a channel that makes its way into the concentrating room. While the pulp or the husk from the cane they're carried outside to be dried and to be later burnt as fuel for making fire for the boiling of the cane juice while some of it is left outside to make a compost which is usually taken back to the fields 
for the regrowing of the sugar cane. So here we try to use and reuse the entire process. Everything of the process is used and reused. The next stage of the process is where we'll be burning some of this dried bagasse or as fuel for the boiling of the cane juice. So that you would see momentarily. So it's bagasse. Bagasse. So pressed sugar cane. That is put outside to be dried by the sun. I've never seen a, a distillery like this. You wouldn't have. This the first really time. Yeah. Oh, they're going to put it in there? If I could get a guy to put in some for you. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That'd be great. I'll do it if you want. Really? Wow. Woo! That's heat. Wow. So while we wait for the guy to come here to help us, I'm going to start, right? Let's grab a bunch of bagasse. Put it here. Get some more. Hold on, guys. No? Oh, man. And then get this. It's an inferno in there. Good Lord, I hope I don't burn myself. It's like a thousand degrees. Oh, the smoke. It's hot. So that goes up and it helps. So it's for the boiling of the cane juice. All right, let's go. Let's see the rest of the distillery. The next stage of the process I'll be showing you is the boiling room. The boiling room. Let's go to the boiling room. Wow, look at this. Huge pots. Massive. So this is the boiling room. So the cane juice we're extracting get collected and boiled in these big pots. But of course, it has to be transferred from one pot to the next by hand. And that is what the guy is actually doing. He's moving the juice from one pot to the next. And as such, the juice get gradually heated by going from one to the next. So what we just did, we boiled the cane juice. We made it sweeter and a little bit thicker by concentrating it. The juice was sent to cool in this tank overnight. And from this holding tank, we use a submergible pump. So this concentrated juice has to be sent into the fermentation tanks now. So the next stage of the process I'll show you is the juice that are left to ferment naturally for the next eight days. And now we're fermenting using these concrete tanks compared to the wooden bats that we used before. So that's the old school style? This is new. Right. So these are our fermentation tanks. You're going to get to see some of the juice that are left there to ferment naturally. Let's go. I want to show you this. Let's go. It smells intense. Most active. Oh my gosh. Look at that. These wow. are the advanced stage of fermentation. So these are more advanced to what you're going to get to see on the other side. Where it's a little bit younger and it's more active. It looks thicker. That fermentation, you can smell it. It's like you're getting drunk just walking through here. <laughs> That's the young fermentation. That's the young one. It's more active and that is because it's younger. So the fact that it's so young and it's so active is because it's, it's younger. Oh, There's yeah. a lot of yeah, it's bubbling. sugars in there. So the bacteria are trying to convert the sugar into alcohol. Wow. After eight days, it gets really calm. And that tells you it's not ready for the next stage, which I'm going to show you. That is referred to as distillation. But for now, let's take in the fermentation. That's amazing. So what is that? Right, so that's a fresh juice that entered the tank earlier today. So fermentation hasn't really started yet. You give it the next day or two and it will be as active as the one that you've just seen. Yeah, that one looks like a little bit of muck on top, right? <laughs> it hasn't quite picked yeah, up. Yeah, it hasn't started. Next is distillation. I've seen it so many times in my lifetime. I've seen it done in Italy. We make grappa, I've seen it done in Albania, at Turtle Farm Albania, we make raki. The whole process is pretty cool. Similar, right? So they ferment, and then once the fermentation is done, they'll put it into these, uh, like it has to go through distillation. You'll see that right now, watch. So the fermented juice that you have just seen, that is where you get the steel. So these are the equipments we use where we have the, the kettle and the wood fire and the filters, and we have the condensing coil that is underneath the water. So this is a very complex process and the guys who are doing that must be, they must be professionals. You don't just take any and everybody to do that part of the job. That is a very sensitive part of the factory and it must be done by the professionals. We saw the whole process. Now it's time to try some super strong rum. They have 75%. Insane. So what do we got here? Our rums that are before you for sampling now. We have the two. That's the strong of the two. 75% right here. This is the one you can't take it out of Grenada. It's not allowed to, you know, I can't fly to Miami with this. 75%. And then this one, the same thing, but 69%. 75% rum. He said I'll be okay, but I think I might die. <coughs> Why? 
I've never had a drink this strong. Never. <coughs> Gives you fire breath. My man, thank you so much for the tour. Very, very much. We learned so much. And if you want to do this tour, it's a 5 EC, which is like 2 US, plus it's a 250 EC for that shot, right? For the tasting. All right, let's go to the next spot. All right, let's go. Let's continue this journey. Two. Got a massive watermelon there. We just arrived to the old airport of Grenada. A lot of history here, right? So in the early 80s, Cold War, Russia and Cuba were aligned and they aligned themselves with the government of Grenada at the time. And then in 1983, Reagan started an operation called Urgent Fury. Urgent Fury, that's right. Now in March 13, 1979, Grenada had its first, well, only successful revolution. That was the only Caribbean country to have a successful revolution. That's when leaders of the party, led by, led by Morris Bishop, overthrew Eric Machigiri. Now that, they stayed in power for a little while, and then in 1983, through the operation of urgent fury, Reagan would have invaded Grenada and put back Eric Machigiri in power. Now this was the airport at the time, and the first thing they did was destroy these, these airplanes. 